So imagine an RPG where you can create a custom character. Now imagine taking that character and chopping off their heads so that they'd be more aerodynamic and would fall off of cliffs easier. And that was STEM class in a nutshell. Pretty much for those of you unaware, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Macrocephalus, and Math. And because it's such an important and prosperous topic of interest where I live, the state has begun incorporating it into our high school education, or in more loose terminology, viciously jamming it down our throats. Surprisingly enough, the class for it had actually become one of my favorites, just because of how lax and directionless it was. I mean, we pretty much just sat around and worked on projects 24-7. Now, before I get into the needlessly long exposition dump for this story, I'd like to give the quick disclaimer that if you're squeamish at all, you might want to proceed with caution. Nothing too graphic or serious happens, and I've of course diluted a few of the details to keep this advertiser friendly, but if you're one of the few who aren't going to ignore this disclaimer thingy, just be warned. But now back to the efficiency analogy. Long story short, most of STEM just boils down to making things smaller and more efficient at least from my experience. Take for example the first project we did in the class, which was making a tower. We were given a single piece of printer paper, 20 centimeters of tape, and a pair of scissors, and were then told to try and make the tallest tower we could, and the group with the tallest would end up winning. It's not that complex. What most people ended up doing is cutting the piece of paper in half, rolling both pieces into tubes, and then stacking one on top of the other. Everyone had pretty similar results for the first test. People then began trying to get tiny height advantages by cutting out little strips of paper on one of the towers and then taping it to the top. Long story short, our group ended up in second place, with the first place winners winning with a tower that looked like a spaghetti noodle and was essentially standing up on willpower alone. The second project, and this is the one where super glue actually gets involved, was where we had to create a balsa wood bridge that would span from one table to another, and could efficiently hold the most weight. The group that had the most efficient project would be the group that got graded 100%, not the group that had the most weight. Knowing this, I made it my goal to make a tiny bridge that could hold a substantial amount of weight, as I figured it would be my best chance at winning. In order to do this, I created a little outline of balsa wood pieces that met the minimum dimensions, and then stacked layers upon layers on top of the base until it was extremely supported. And then I went berserk with super glue. <laughs> you see, super glue is really good at making things not fall apart, and with the primary objective of the prod being to make a bridge that wouldn't fall apart, well, super glue was a pretty efficient way of doing it. I made sure that every single piece of balsa wood that in any way came in contact with another one was connected by at least some super glue, and the important pieces were surrounded by a whole blob of it. By the end of the week, I was pretty happy with what we had. While it looked pretty insignificant and tiny next to some of the goliaths that the other groups had created, I was pretty sure that it would at least perform decently. We had about three days left until Judgment Day, so in the meantime we were kinda left to just mess around and make tiny improvements wherever we could. Every single group was working hard trying to buff up the bridge in even just the tiniest way. I should also mention now that you were also allowed to make towers, which doesn't really change anything because the grading scale was balanced out, and they were on equal terms, but it's probably worth mentioning anyway. During this day, my team was kinda at a standstill, so we're just sitting there talking and being unproductive, as teenagers do, when we hear a bunch of commotion erupt from the table right next to us. As it turns out, one of the kids had a super glue bottle shoot up into his face. Mind you, this isn't the incident of the video, and he ended up having to sit at the eyewash station for like 8 minutes straight, but thankfully ended up fine. Some 5 minutes later I had a stroke of genius, so I set up the balsa wood and go and grab a thing of super glue. The one I happened to grab ended up being an unopened bottle, and by now I'm sure you already know the direction this story is heading. I take off the cap, and normally you can just pick the little thingy off to open it, but in this specific scenario, it was jammed. After two minutes of kind of trying to open it, I gave up and handed it to my friend, who, fun fact, happens to be the twin brother of the person who got super glue in his eyes. An odd coincidence. He grabs the super glue bottle, grabs an exacto knife, and slice, off comes the top of the bottle along with all of its contents. It was as if everything had gone into slow motion, but not really. Thankfully I had been wearing safety goggles because when I reopen my eyes, I see droplets of super glue sliding down them. I also had the quick reaction of ducking down my head in hopes of protecting my face, but as a result, the entire 20 milliliters of super glue was now inside of my hair. My initial reaction to the dilemma I was facing was... Nothing. I just sat there for a second, looked at my groupmates, reached up into my hair, and felt something wet 
and sticky. Now is not the time to let your mind wander. I went home not long after, as it was the end of the day, and sat in the living room waiting for my mom to get home. Mom, I have a bit of an issue. An hour later, my mom takes her hands out of my hair after cleaning it out, and I asked her if she managed to get all of it. And that's the story of how I had super glue in my hair for three months straight. Truth be told, I didn't really notice it all that much. It made washing it slightly uncomfortable, but outside of that, it didn't really make a significant difference in my day-to-day -day life. If you're curious, my team ended up winning the bridge competition. I remember one of the teams with this massive bridge ended up taunting us during the testing period because our bridge only held 17 kilos, whereas theirs held 25. But then we calculated efficiency and nearly doubled their score, which really isn't all that impressive because no one really knew what they were doing. I looked into it a bit to see what other professional level people scored to see if we even performed decently, and from the look of things, yeah, no. We're at the pinnacle of a group of amateurs. But hey, let me have my moment. So here's your little tidbit of wisdom to take away from this story. The moral, if you will. Be safe. Imagine if I wasn't wearing safety goggles and permanently lost my vision. A tiny bit of caution goes a long way. Oh yeah, also don't open super glue bottles with X-Acto knives. And wait, 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 before you click off, whoop, okay, you can go now. If you want to see more of me, here's a video I made about what living alone as a teenager is like, or this other one, which is supposed to be algorithmically determined to be the best video for you. I'm working on restarting my Discord server, so the first place you'd hear about that is Twitter, as well as maybe the community tab. Okay, bye.